Ninja Foodi, never stick premium cookware. Are they worth it? Well, it's been six months since I've been using them. Are they still worth it? Stick around to find out. Now, there is a difference between the premium and the non-premium that you buy at Walmart or Target. Uh, I'll put some pictures on the screen here. You can see the difference in the, the coating, the outside coating, and the thicknesses. There are differences in the handles. Uh, the handles uh, are, these are uh, cast, where the other ones are just a folded um, sheet. All right, so now let's talk about six months of usage. We've been using this set, the Ninja Foodi Never Stick Premium Set. We've been using this for uh, six months exclusively because uh, we want to make sure that we got our money's worth, just like you would. This is the one pan that I, I noticed that we damaged the most. <laughs> it's probably because we probably use it the most. But um, you look at the, the handles all in good shape here. The, I, di I didn't notice any, uh, any discolorations on the inside, but I did notice them on the back, on the, uh, on the stainless steel or the steel uh, base of it. Uh, we use gas burners here, and the gas obviously will discolor that to some degree, uh, but the flames will kind of discolor that. I'm sure I could probably clean that off with some scotch Brite or something if I really wanted to, but it doesn't affect the cooking. Uh, the other thing I noticed is uh, some scratches. I don't know if you could see that off the top camera. So you got some scuff marks along this edge here, and that is basically storage. You know, put it into the cabinet, slams up against the side or other pans, you're obviously going to get some, some scuffs and scratches. Although I did protect it as much as I can because, look, I mean, like any other cookware, you want to protect your cookware. You're not going to abuse them just for the sake of proving whether or not they're, you know, they're no good because you can damage just about anything. But uh, that's probably what that's from. Uh, but it, it's not flaking. It's not peeling. It's not, uh, it's not affecting the cooking. Uh, it's still working really well. I'm very satisfied with the way the the coating is reacting. It's not peeling off. It's not uh, it's not just falling apart like some of the other Teflon coating that uh, we've had over the years. Uh, this is the the other 10 inch pan here, uh, the skillet that uh, we use a lot. And again, you can see the discoloration here from the gas burners. Uh, this one here didn't have uh, any damage really on the on the edge here. It's got a little bit of a ding there. Again, it's storing them and smacking them together when you're putting them in the in the cabinet. Uh, I did notice uh, some look like uh, uh, scuff marks of some sort. I don't know if you can see that up top here. You can see, I don't know if I get the light in right, but uh, it, it's got, you know, it looked like almost tool marks uh, from metal utensils, which you can see some of the videos here and I'll, I'll put some highlights here as to uh, what we did. I used a metal whisk in this uh, when I was making the sauce and you can, you can see that. You can actually hear the uh, scuffing uh, that I was making in that. And it, it could have been damaged with something like that or you know, I, I know I didn't use a knife or a blade in there to damage it, but it's not peeling. Again, holding up really, really well. Uh, the big pot, I, I, I've, I've used a, a immersion blender to make soups and you can see me using that in this video. And it held up really well. There's no damages on that. You know, the lids all holding up well. One uh, problem, or not a problem, what, one little caveat to the uh, this type of lid where the metal is rolled in there, you can see some buildup on the edges of the, the lids where you kind of can't even get underneath it to really clean it. You know, I would love to see like a one piece unit without the rolled metal like that, um, where stuff can get underneath that you really can't clean it all that well. Uh, if you guys have any uh, suggestions on how to get that clean in the corners without ripping it apart and gouging into it with tools, uh, let, let me know in the comment section below. But here's the, uh, here's the big pot here. Again, you can see the, the discoloration at, on the bottom here and on the inside. I don't see any, I haven't been able to see any marks, any uh, gouges, peeling, working really well. So overall, uh, I think these things are holding up really well. So your next question is probably, well, 
how's the nonstick holding up? You know, that's what you really want to know. Now that mechanically everything is still attached, everything uh, is still holding up really well after six months of usage, well, can you cook an egg? Can you do some egg whites in there? You know, can you cook meat in there without it sticking? How's the never stick coating holding up on these Ninja Foodi uh, pans and skillets? Well, I'm going to show you that coming up. All right, so a couple of questions and uh, comments that I've gotten from subscribers is, well, egg white seems to be a problem uh, cooking in these uh, never stick pans. So we're gonna, we're gonna give that a shot. I'm gonna see if it's still after six months, if it's still non-stick or if it sticks or what it's gonna do. I don't normally make just re regular egg whites in here. So let's, uh, let's figure it out, let's find out. So I, I haven't uh, done any prep work to the pan. Uh, I'm using my induction cooked up only because uh, it's a little easier to uh, judge the temperature. Uh, I'm not gonna use the temperature setting on it. I'm gonna use uh, its, uh, its gauge setting. It goes from uh, one to 10. So I know that five is medium, three is low to medium. Uh, right now I've got it set to one just to get it started. So I'm gonna set it to say, go to four. And what I wanna do now is I wanna, I want to double check the temperature. And if you remember in the original video, the handle uh, was actually uh, running at a different temperature. About 300 degrees is probably where uh, we want to be anyway for the cooking. So right now our cool side on this side here, about 270, still going up. About 300 here, 300 here, about 260, 270, 80. So right around the center, seems to be holding pretty well. So let's get the egg whites in here. Now, I haven't done anything to the egg whites. Uh, you know, no salt, no pepper, no oils. Uh, it's just regular egg whites and at room temperature, not right out of the fridge. Uh, I don't cook eggs right out of the fridge. So let's, uh, let's see what this does now. So let's do that. And I'm just gonna let it sit there for a second. I'm not gonna stir anything. We're just gonna see where it goes. Just gonna let it keep going until all the egg white is cooked and we'll see where we go. Now the setting is at four, which is medium, low medium, uh, somewhere around there. Right, the egg whites are almost done. It's still a little watery on this end here. So I'm gonna turn the handle this way here just so I can work it with my left hand. And I mean, it seems to, Seems to work pretty well so far. Oh, I mean, there's a little bit of, I don't want to say stickiness, but you know, as it's drying up on there, it's going to catch a little bit. Uh, this material is not like Teflon, super slick. It just, it's never stick. Uh, the Ninja Foodi never stick uh, style. So the question is, will it stick? And right now it doesn't look like it's sticking at all. So I'm just gonna go all the way around with it. I mean, you can see that. I mean, here's your, here's your omelet. Or here's your egg white, you know, fully cooked. So I'm gonna let it finish up on the other side here. So it's not, doesn't feel rubbery at all. It's nice and fluffy. So it definitely uh, works well. And you, you've got to let it cook enough. And that's the, the key to eggs is you, you can't play around with them. You have to let them set. So the best thing is to keep it on the temperature and let it sit long enough for it to set. Once it sets, then you can move. So give this another second. And got a little bit of what feels like sticking there, but it comes right off with a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of spatula movement here. There you have your, your egg white. So the egg white worked pretty well. So put the omelet on the plate here. Let's, let's see how it did. Now, there's no seasoning to this. You know, normally I would add you know, some seasoning for flavoring but I just want to show the texture on here. 
and it's very fluffy, very nice. It's like a little cloud. Hmm. Perfect. No seasoning again. Didn't stick. Didn't uh, it didn't burn. Actually, you can see the coloring very evenly. It's not rubbery, so uh, you know, it definitely works well. So uh, for the for the comments that I had out there uh, for how to do egg whites, you got to make sure they're at room temperature, and you want to preheat the pan low to medium, and let the egg set. If you're going in there messing around with it, it's you're gonna probably overcook the egg, and it's just not gonna come out as fluffy as you as you would like. But egg whites work well. So I'm gonna get this cleaned out here. So, So I'm going to get this cleaned out. I'm just going to use a little bit of paper towel with some water on it and just get in there. And as you can see, it just comes right off just beautifully. There you go. So. Nice and clean. Not, not anything sticking to it. Cleans out really well. And that was just a paper towel with some water. Okay, so for the second test, uh, I'm going to be making this flank steak here. Now, I've let the, the, the steak sit out, and you should, with any meats, let them sit out, get to room temperature, they'll cook a lot better. I've got my induction cooked up on five, roughly about 350 degrees. Actually, actually getting a lot hotter. So we're at searing temperature, over 350. So let's see if the, uh, the flank steak sticks. Now I cleaned out all the fat or as much of the fat as I could because obviously the fat's good oil and it's going to keep it from you know sticking. So let's put that on and see if we can get a sear. Oh that's good. So you can you can hear it sizzling right on the touch so it's hot enough to sear. Now I'm going to get brave here. I'm going to crank this up to about eight. It goes up to ten. So this should bring it up you know, close to 400 degrees, if, if not higher. So let's see. Well, 350, we're starting. 370. So we're at 370 and holding the handle. Cool. It's cool all the way. So looking good. So let that cook for another minute. And it's... See that? This is... Searing nicely, I can see a little bit of the color on there. So I'm going to give it another minute and uh, get a flip to see if it's actually sticking. Now I don't think it's going to stick. It's just uh, the, these pans just been acting. They've been really, really uh, reliable when it comes to this. I haven't had any issues with sticking. Okay, let's give this a, a flip here and see. That didn't stick at all. So let's try the other side here. And you can see nice sear marks there. Looking good. So I'm not too interested in the flavoring here. I'm not going to add anything. It's just about the cooking process. Will it cook evenly? Now you can see the top of the, the meat here. It's got pretty even color. That tells you that the, the heat is dispersed evenly on this. So this you know, very good. Very good on uh, on their end. They did a good job with the base. Nice even uh disbursement of heat. Okay, let's see what what temperature we're currently on here. Well, we're well over 400, 450. So this is definitely uh, holding its heat. Now I've used these in the in the oven too. Uh, I'll take them right off the cooktop and into the oven uh, at about 400, 450 degrees. Haven't had any problems with that. It cooks really well. Just be aware that the handle will get hot in the oven. So let's take a look at the other side here and see how we did. And if you see that, it actually looks pretty even. You know, it's not, uh, I don't see any burn marks or anything. So uh, it looks to be doing pretty well. So at this point, I would I would probably put this in the oven when, if I was cooking a meal with it. And, uh, and finish the cooking, add some seasoning. Again, I haven't added any seasoning here. 
So it seems to be doing well, not having any problems. We're going to see if we can clean that sticky stuff off, the residue of the meat uh, off. So I'm going to try to get some more residue on this side. So I'm going to push that in here. Okay, let's get some, some good stuff sticking to this pan here. So test the cleaning on it. Now I'm forcing it to stick now. It's like nothing. I mean, this is nothing's happening. You can actually use the meat. Look at this. I'm using the the shank or the the uh, the beef piece of meat here to clean off the residue. Look at that. I bet you never tried that at home. So look at that. It's just cleaning it right off. Beautiful. Can you ask for more than that? You just use. The same piece of meat you're cooking to clean the pot, to clean the pan for you. That's great. Yeah, look at that. Done. Put that on there. We're going to turn this off here. Okay, so just going to use wet paper towel and clear, clean off the whatever's left on the residue here. Okay. Just clean that all off. You can see the, the the stickiness or the residue of the meats. So so far, the egg still doesn't stick after six months. The meats, no no oils, no nothing, didn't stick and uh, cleaned up beautifully. So the, this this pan is fantastic. I, I'm, I'm loving the way that uh, these pans are uh, uh, are working and and the way they clean up. They, they're just they just right now they've been one of the best pan that I've used. Oh, take a look at this grime. Look at that. I mean that's that's on pretty good. You can hear that. Wow. That's I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that off. Okay, now this was basically a honey mustard with some ketchup little bit of basil, you know, pretty much everything thrown into this one here. You know, get some, some cheese sauce, use a queso in here, and I let it cook, and I let it cook, and now it's pretty dried up. So let's take a look. Try to scrape that. Look at that. That thing, ooh, popping right off. Nice. Look at that, huh? That's amazing. Let's see if we can get this little piece here off the corner. Wow, oh, that just comes right off. So th these Ninja Never Stick are Absolutely amazing. Look at that. I'm very impressed. So it cleaned up really nice. Even after six months, six months of using these pans. This is fantastic. Now I'm going to give it a wash in the sink, rinse out, and I'll show you what it looks like. So just going to use some warm water and just a regular sponge here. Look at that, that's just coming right off. Now I'm going to use the rough side to see if we can get any scratches in it. Let's take a look at that. Finish washing this. Okay, so let's take a look here. I'm just going to grab some paper towels. I mean, 
look at this. Look at this fish. Beautiful. Look at that. Didn't didn't scratch anything. I don't see any scratches or scuff marks. See, we'll get a nice close-up of it. Uh, and I'll show you what it looks like all the way around. Let me know down in the comment section if you bought these and how they're working out for you. Uh, you've got my opinion here. Now that we've gone through the egg, the meat, the cleaning, I've showed you some of the damages that I've caused to these pan and it's still working fine. Uh, I'll give you my final thoughts in the next section. So my final thoughts on the Ninja Foodi Never Stick Premium Cookware. Well, I personally like them. I think uh, the cookware is made well. It's a good quality, nice weight to them. Uh, price point, depending on your budget, it could be in your budget, outside your budget, but I think for the money, I think it's a pretty good set uh, to use. Uh, overall, I'm happy with the way they cook, happy with the way that they've lasted for six months now. I will be doing a one-year update review uh, at the end of this year, just to let you know how it works how everything kind of uh, lasted for a year. Overall, it's lasted longer than most of my other uh, skillets and uh, pans and cookware that I've used with different coatings on it that just didn't last more than a month or two. This is six months of daily use and it's still holding up really well. So uh, I think if you're in the market for a decent cookware, that is gonna, it's gonna last you and I think you're gonna be happy with. The Ninja Foodi, Never Stick Premium Cookware uh, is the place to go. Now, I don't own the uh, the general cookware, the regular uh, Never Stick. I own the premium, which is, uh, again, much thicker. Uh, Price-wise, it's a bit more uh, expensive, but I think it's completely worth the price. So uh, if you're in the market to, to get a set, I think this is a good set, a good option for you. I'll leave some links at the bottom of this uh, the video in the description section if you're interested and use uh, their affiliate links. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it answered some of your questions. If you do have other questions or uh, other things you want me to try with it, let me know uh, in the comments section below. Give me some likes, give me some shares, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.